she's tamed the terrible. She's preached to the perverted. Not that much in love. She's even cured the crazy. There's one big problem Victoria Stilwell has yet to tackle. Fat dogs. There are three to four million in the UK. That's more than the population of Wales. Just as we humans are getting bigger and bigger, it seems our canine counterparts are hot on our heels. Just like us, a love of bad food and a lack of exercise are taking their toll on man's best friend. This week on It's Me or the Dog, Victoria meets three dogs desperately in need of her help. I go out, I have food, I come back, there is no food. You look like a big, fat, white sausage. <laughs> oh my God. God, she's a feeder. Yes, what you are, you're a feeder. Will Victoria get them to trash the treats and shift those pounds? Hazzy, what's happened to you? I don't think my mum knows herself how much she feeds her. Mm, she's going to realise now. Bargy. Bargy. Right. Oh, all fried stuff. Are you going to suffer my wrath <laughs> or oh, <dear>. what? <laughs> Victoria Stilwell will be spending the next few weeks intensively coaching errant owners, putting pudgy pooches on strict diets and making sure they all get lots of exercise. I'm disgusted by owners who let their dogs get fat. To me, it's as bad as starving your dog. So I'm on a personal mission to get Britain's dogs back down to size and it starts here. And with such a strict regime ahead, Victoria has enlisted vet Mark to ensure all the dogs are safe throughout. After that, they're on their own. Their efforts judged at a final weigh-in in, in six months' time. Victoria will be aiming for a weight loss of 1% per week to get them down to their optimum weight for their breed, and she's taking no prisoners. First up, meet Hattie. Hattie is the fattest dog I've ever seen. Oh, big dog, big dog. Come in, big dog. My friends always laugh about her weight, and uh, we refer to her as a seal cub. Hattie belongs to Louise, Emily and Phoebe. Strangers in the street don't necessarily believe you. They go, oh, yeah, I bet you do. Give her the odd tip. It's like, no. And then they look at me. It's like, I'm not feeding her, honestly. So where is she getting the extra calories? This large lady is a master thief. She'll take anything she can get her hand. I go out, I have food, I come back, there is no food. If I've got dinner, she'll steal my dinner. Oh, she ate my dinner! I probably have to buy bread every day because she's normally stolen half a loaf and it's slobbered on. Hattie has destroyed so many bins, Louise doesn't even bother with them anymore. If I don't remember to put it up high, she, it will be shredded. If I remember to put it up, but I don't push it far enough back, she can hook it. And the contents will be strewn all across the living room. It's just like, oh, Hattie, it's, it's, I just despair of it all. And Hattie's weird and wonderful diet causes one unpleasant side effect. <laughs> she farts. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, the kids find it highly amusing. We all have to exit the room. <laughs> and when it comes to working off all that gobbled garbage, walkies aren't really Hattie's thing. No, she'd rather hurry back to her favourite spot. The sofa. Her lack of energy is a disappointment to the three girls who are desperate for Hattie to be part of their gang. We'd love Hattie to be more, more playful. In fact, the children are now talking about, can we have another dog that plays with us and Hattie? And it's kind of sad. She's looking stylish! <laughs> They said, because Hattie doesn't do anything. Hattie, you can dress up, she can be Pocahontas, she can be a fairy, she can be anything, as long as it's motionless. I would love her to lose weight. And I don't want to give up on her, but I just kind of have. Beagles have a supreme sense of smell, and it's Hattie's ability to sniff out snacks that has been her undoing. This is what a beagle should look like. So what will Victoria make of this canine couch potato? Oh, my goodness. 
Has he? <gasps> oh, she's a girl. Oh, she's you. Oh my, she, she like a... she's gonna have puppies. Is she a scrounger? Yeah, she's a typical beagle. She steals. Okay. That's her biggest problem. This is like an old man's beer belly. It's huge, and don't look at me like that. Mark, the vet, has come along to give Hattie a health check, starting with her heart. I can barely hear it beating through the layers of fat covering her chest. And she gives him a welcome present. <laughs> <laughs> Why does she fart so much? Hattie's problem is, is she's fed so many different things, the bacteria are constantly changing in her gut and can't get used to any normal food. So they're, they're very confused bacteria. They don't really know how to keep breaking down these, these challenging foodstuffs. So it, it, she produces these disgusting gases as a result. Mark's got one final duty, to find out just how hefty Hattie is. OK, so bearing in mind a normal adult female beagle should weigh about roughly 12 kilos, um, Hattie is weighing in at about 27 kilos today, over double what she should be. That is extremely bad. Hattie's life expectancy is being seriously compromised. She's six at the moment. Um, I doubt she'd make it to ten. Oh, my God. Yeah, which is very sad. Time for Victoria to put this hefty hound on a life-saving diet. How many times a day do you feed Hattie? I feed Hattie once a day in the morning before I go to work. OK, and what do you feed her? She has a dried food. We need to change her feeding. Right. I believe that dogs should be fed twice a day. OK. And the reason I believe this is that if you just feed a dog in the morning, by the evening, your dog is hungry. That makes dogs want to scavenge even more. OK. But it's not just Hattie's feeding routine that needs addressing. She'll steal whatever she can get her canine chops on. Even the girls' lunch boxes aren't dog-proof. Get out. Victoria believes that dogs shouldn't be allowed to steal their owner's food and wants the whole family to see that it's their responsibility to help Hattie control her urges. Okay. Look what I have for no. you. On the table. Sweet. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Look at that. Do you know what? What? You can't have a single one of these. Oh. Oh. I'm getting eaten. Like no, that's not very nice. <laughs> Is this tempting for you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ready? Oh no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of temptation you're going through now is exactly the kind of temptation that Hattie goes through every day. Do you know that a beagle has a very, very sensitive nose? That's why it's so good at scenting and hunting. In fact, her sense of smell is 40 times better than us humans. The thing is that when you do go out or you leave your lunch boxes at a place where Hattie can get them, or there's food around, or there's a rubbish bin there, Hattie will get it because she can't help herself. In order to help Hattie not scavenge all of these tempting foodstuffs, including her food and your human food, have to be kept out of her way. But keeping food out of Hattie's reach is just the start. Coming up, Hattie gets her very own diet delicacy. Oh. And Victoria meets Gizmo, the chunky chihuahua who loves to chomp chocolate. Quality straight for a quality dog. Gizmo! Poor dog. And Jess, the dumpy dachshund, whose indulgent owner may just be the death of her. That disgust. This is Gizmo, the little chihuahua with a monster appetite. He's hungry all the time. <laughs> Gizmo's so fat because he doesn't have a proper diet. Gizmo is Carol's favourite dog. Gizmo's definitely my baby. Yeah, he's definitely spoiled. He belongs to Carol, Ron and Kirsty. And this pampered pooch behaves like an A-list celebrity. He will not eat dog food and he sits and he stares and he's like, I haven't had any dinner, so I need feeding. He's like a little bush baby, he's, his little tiny eyes. And when I eat ready-made meals, I'll leave him a little bit and he picks it up and runs off with it. 
Gizzy gets what he wants. What should we have now, Giz? After a round of curry, Gizmo likes nothing better than to freshen his palate. Mm. Five and a half dry, Gizzy has a little bit of an half dry. It's my favourite and Gizzy, isn't it? Gizmo probably has as many after eights as she does. He probably gets two or three. As far as the family are concerned, it's all Carol's fault. Come on in, eat out quick before Daddy comes home. I don't think it's clever, but Carol will take no notice at all of what I say. She's because oh, he's hungry. Look, look at his little sad eyes. He just has the total run of the house. He goes where he likes, when he likes, does what he likes, eats what he likes. Can I do it? All right. Chihuahuas are companion dogs who don't need much exercise or much food. But Curry King Gizmo's been getting a lot more than his recommended 320 calories a day. Just as well help is on its way. You look like a big, fat, white sausage. <laughs> That's not nice, is it? Yes, you do. I want to see why he's got this way. I have to find out why he's got this way. So if we could start off with feeding. Yeah. And if you can show me what you feed him. As well as the dog food she feeds all of the family's six dogs, Gizmo gets special treatment, his favourite takeaway. Feed him what's left over from the Indian from last night. But he likes naan bread's best. I can't stand by and watch this fat dog eating Indian food. I'm going to take it away. I'm sorry, Gizmo. I'm sorry. That's it, baby. Finished. Gizmo's love affair with Indian cuisine is about to come to an end. Next up, Victoria needs to check out Gizmo's exercise regime. Giz, Giz, come on. While the other five dogs Giz. love going for walks with Ron, for Gizmo, it's all a bit too much like hard work. Can't go walkies. Come on in. Clever boy. Clever boy. Come on. Come, Giz. Giz. Gizmo. Gizmo! He just won't walk and because he's just got no go and, and all the other dogs want to go and play and Gizmo just doesn't partake. Yeah. If I was that fat, I would find it very difficult to play with the other dogs as well. Poor dog. Carol is oblivious to the extent of the problem, so Victoria's brought along vet Mark to tell her exactly how much Gizmo weighs. Now, uh, normal for a chihuahua of his age is between one and three kilos. And this is your weighing time. moment of truth. So he's 5.1 kilos, so we're two to three times his suggested body weight. God. So we've got a problem on our hands that we need to deal with as soon as possible. How will his weight affect his life expectancy? Unfortunately, because of his weight, because of his lifestyle, um, and because of his lack of exercise, eight years old now, he's probably not looking at more than living till 11 or 12 years old. So I think today's the time to, uh, to start doing something about it. Yeah. The first thing in Victoria's weight loss plan is addressing the dog's diet. She suspects the chubby chihuahua is chomping more than his fair share. Do you know how much Gizmo should be eating a day? I don't yeah. know exactly, but not very much. No. This is how much dry dog food he should be eating a day. Oh, dear. Split into two meals. Hey. Are you joking? <laughs> but it's not just the quantity of food, it's the quality too. Gizmo's beloved takeaways contain high levels of fat, salt and sugar. This gooey, yucky, disgusting mess is going in to your dog's stomach. Gizmo's favourite after-dinner treat is also high on Victoria's hit list. Have you heard... Of theobromine. No. Theobromine is a chemical in chocolate. Why is theobromine bad? Well, we humans can process it, but dogs can't. They have a different biological makeup to us and they can't process it. If a dog has too much chocolate, the heart rate increases, the breathing rate increases, the heart begins to pump faster and faster, and then eventually the dog will start to fit. Then basically it's too late. Seven and a half grams of chocolate is a toxic dose. And this is what seven and a half grams of dark chocolate is. Only that. Right. Take a look at this. This is a real dog coffin. And I filled it with 
chocolate. Bottom line, if you keep feeding your dog like you do, your dog will die. That's it, curtains. Bye, Gizmo. This is Carol's first wake-up call. And Gizmo's not the only dog whose owner is killing with kindness. In deepest, darkest Surrey, there lurks a beast of gargantuan proportion. Her belly is rubbing along the floor. This walrus-like dachshund dwarfs her companion, and her appetite knows no bounds. It's got to stop because she's only young. This mega mutt goes by the name of Jess. And how did Jess get into this state? And it's the contents of Jennifer's magic cupboard that has Jess utterly spellbound. She has crunchy little dog chews. Then there's the shapes. She has tripe sticks deep fried. She has biscuits and she has two or three or four. And not to mention a supersized breakfast and dinner. <laughs> Jennifer's daughter Sophie is her number one critic especially as her mum looks after her miniature dachshund, Harry, while she's at work. Don't tell her, for God's sake. Hello, darling. Don't. Oh, my God. Oh, look, there he's Mom, gone. Mum, this is why he's getting fussy at home, you know, because of that. That's what grandmas are for. She's my mum's companion, and they're both each other's companion. They're best friends which I think is really lovely, but, you know, I've got a best friend. I don't stick a Mars bar in her mouth every time I see her. She is a dog. You know, she's not a human being. She's a dog. She may be just a dog to the rest of the family, but no-one's told Jennifer that, and she's promoted Jess to the top of the food chain. Naughty, naughty, naughty. I hope you're not um, feeding that dog scraps. Mm. Don't forget we're waiting for some of it, so don't give it all to the dogs. <laughs> Jen does love Jess. I mean, if I had that sort of love from Jen, I'd be very, very happy. Jess gets to sample the best of Jennifer's culinary skills. She likes a piece, a little bit of cheese. Birthday cake. A little piece of beef or pork. Sausages and whatever. I think they both got a thing for chocolate. She does like a little bit of chocolate, but not Belgian chocolate. Roast dinners are a classic. Some cheese and biscuits. Vegetables. She loves grapes. She's a feeder. Guess what you are? You're a feeder. Those horrible skinny oh, men that no, feed I'm those big nurturer. fat women. I'm a nurturer. <laughs> I'm not a feeder. You're wicked. Luckily for this obese dachshund, help is on the way. When owners love their dogs, some may show it by treating their dogs with food. But far from being an act of love, they're actually killing their dogs with kindness. Dachshunds were bred to hunt badgers with short legs for squeezing into tiny spaces. But this doesn't make them the greatest athletes and their weight can balloon out of control if they overeat and get lazy. Hello. Hi. Hello. Come in. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Victoria, nice to oh, meet Jennifer. you. And, uh... This is Jess. Whoa, Jess. Good grief. How... Whoa. Oh, look at that. Belly, what's mummy been feeding you? What indeed? Victoria wants to observe a typical lunchtime, and as usual, Jess is eating with the family. Don't give it all to her. I'm not. I'm only giving him a little bit. Can't do that when she. Stop feeding the dog. Don't feed my dog. Don't feed my dog. She takes Sophie to one side to find out just how much Jess is eating between meals. Your mother's dog is incredibly overweight. It's quite upsetting. I don't think my mum knows herself how much she feeds her. I don't think she realises. I don't think she realises she's even doing it. <laughs> well, she's, um, she's going to realise now. To find out just how overweight Jess is, Mark the vet gives her a thorough examination. The average um, weight for this breed of between 9 and 10. And see what she weighs. Nine. 19, just over 19. We're looking at double the weight of a normal dog double of her breed. Weight. Double the so weight. So she's two dogs worth. Mark then checks Jess's abdomen, blood pressure and heart rate. For poor Jess, the future's not looking rosy. She's probably not going to make it till 10, um, probably not even till 8, actually. The excess weight is taking eight years off her life. Of those years that she's got left, they're not going to be particularly happy ones either. This is crunch time now. We are going to sort this problem out. We have to do it if Jess is going to stay alive. Mm. Obesity contributes to a myriad of health problems, 
from diabetes to an increased risk of cancer. For Jess to lose weight, Jennifer must cut back the treats. Victoria wants her to see just how all those doggy snacks soon add up. Look upon this food that I've laid out for you here, because this is the human equivalent of what Don't you feed that. Jess Ooh. every week. 21 Jaffa cakes. Joking. Seven big chocolate bars. 14 chocolate wafers. 21 glasses of wine. Yes, sir. Oh, no, Jess, I'm sorry. Oh, bless her. Look at she her. relies on me. Oh, sorry, Jess. Oh, that's, I'm glad I've seen it. I'm really oh. grateful. When I see a malnourished dog with its bones sticking through, that shocks me. When I see a fat dog that can hardly move, that shocks me. Mm. Both, is, uh, both are cruel in their own ways. Because obesity is a human problem, not a canine one. Jennifer may have seen the error of her ways, but she must now undo the damage done so far. This is the kind of food that you can give her. A dachshund, a standard dachshund, should be being fed around 75 grams of dry kibble per meal. Despite their sharp teeth, dogs, like humans, are omnivores. Therefore, they eat both plant and animal matter, so benefit from the addition of fruit and vegetables to their diet. Vegetables. The best way to do vegetables is to cook them and mince them. Oh, right. Rice is really good. Oats as well. Yogurt, low-fat yogurt, has good bacteria that helps with the stomach and aids digestion. Sometimes you can put a raw egg in as well. Binds the stomach very, very good. Because if your dog has to eat dry kibble every single day, then it is boring. Mm. And I think dogs appreciate a varied diet. Now, look at this dog biscuit here. One of these biscuits is the equivalent to 27 grams of lean chicken. Oh, right. Now this, you could treat her throughout the day. But there are also other things you can give. Carrots, for example. Little bits of apple, bits of orange. With healthier food going in at one end, Jess should soon start to feel the benefits at the other. A good dog poo is a poo that is formed, but when you pick it off the street with your baggy, it leaves a little bit of residue on the pavement. With all the doggy dieters furnished with strict instructions, it's down to the owners to keep it up. They must have the willpower on behalf of their dogs, not the easiest of tasks for some owners. I think she eats for the sake of it. A bit like me. Coming up, the dogs get their 20-week weigh-in to see if they're on target. Come on, doggy dog, doggy dog. But some of the doggy dieters are finding the hunger hard to handle. Then... Look what she's done. So I have here a special doggy treadmill. And this is going to be good because you can exercise your dog in all weathers. Um, and we can build the exercise up very slowly. Put a lead on him, put him on the treadmill, and we'll start very slowly, see what he does. Oh, he's such a good boy. Ready? Plenty of encouragement, plenty of praise. Go for it. Good boy. Good boy. He's a okay. clever boy. Come on, good boy. Good boy. And keep going. Keep going. Plenty of praise. Come on, don't give up. Don't give up. That's it. Good boy, good boy. Yes. Good. Good boy. Listen, With Carol up. under strict instruction, it's time for Victoria to turn her attentions to Hattie, the bulging bin raider. Victoria has some immediate correctional training to reform this food kleptomaniac. What we're going to do is we're going to spy on her. I'm going to make a very loud noise with an alarm. I have. Um, as soon as she tries to get up, and what we hope from that is that she goes... <gasps> Hattie will begin to associate her stealing food with the unpleasant noise and change her behaviour. But it's not just the dog that needs to change her ways. You have a plastic bag by bin. your sink, nose height, full of rubbish. I've never met, had a bin that's beagle-proof, so we don't have a bin. I have a metal bin that is secure. Just in front of the metal bin, there is a mat. And underneath the mat, I have put what's known as a pressure sensor pad. And what happens is that when she steps on the mat to get to the bin, she hears a very loud noise. From now on, going to the bin is going to be unpleasant for her. 
Okay. And she's backing away. She doesn't like it. <laughs> she's persistent, isn't she? She wants those. Look at <laughs> she's looking at them now, going, I, I really want you, but that's a horrible noise. And the reason why she barked is because it confused her. She's learned that's it. That's what sound aversion is all about. It should be such a horrible sound that the dog never wants to repeat that, never wants to hear that again. Our sandwiches are safe. With Hattie performing well, Victoria wants the family to keep up the training and to kickstart Hattie's weight loss with lots of walkies. To keep this dieting dog motivated, Victoria has a plan. Mm, mm, mm. Low fat doggy treats. The main ingredient, pureed liver. This low-fat, nutritious protein has got Hattie salivating already. Actually doesn't smell that wonderful for us, does it? But do you know what? Remember, Hattie's sense of smell is going to go crazy over this. To bind the bickies, Victoria adds cornmeal, flour and garlic powder. Dogs love garlic. You mix that. You don't want to lick the spoon? Yeah. That's nicely mixed up. Can I help it? Ooh, doesn't that look yummy, Mum? Now you put this in a really hot oven for about 20 minutes. Oh, I got... There you go. Shut the door. Thank you, touch it. Oh, gosh, doesn't that look good? Oh! Oh. It smells absolutely <laughs> disgusting. Oh, All right. Oh. Just this one square, that's... Hattie's daily ration. With Hattie's treats under control, Victoria turns her attentions to Jess, the dumpy dachshund. When Victoria first met her, owner Jennifer seemed unable to stop feeding her canine companion, and as a result, she's double the dog she should be. But Victoria's got an innovative exercise idea that should burn those calories off. Sophia, you told me that Jess really likes water. Yes. So I brought you here to your local hydrotherapy centre. Jennifer, when dogs are overweight like Jess is, you'll put an extra strain on their joints when they're exercising. Dachshunds particularly, because they've got a long back, are at an extra risk. Um, they've also got an, a genetic problem where their discs that are between their vertebra can rupture, so she's at a higher risk of that because of her weight as well. Dachshunds are genetically prone to back problems and Jess has had spasms before. Her excess weight is causing her spine to bow, which leaves her all the more susceptible. The centre give her a thorough physio to check that she's strong enough to swim. Then it's time to launch. Hydrotherapy is a great way for a dog to get in shape. A one-minute swim burns as many calories as running a mile. Girl, Jess, come on, good girl. The water supports the body weight, making the joints and muscles less prone to strain and injury, whilst providing a total body workout. All three owners are equipped with Victoria's diet and exercise plans, allowing them to slowly and safely oh, slim their dog. She's starving. Crash dieting your dog means the weight goes straight back on, just like us humans. The owners have six months to go it alone and put the plan into action. And Victoria's keen to keep an eye on them, so she's given them video cameras to chart their progress. Gizzy is getting a pro on this treadmill now. Look at this. Gizzy on the treadmill with no one there. He's getting a pro at it. Such a clever doggy, isn't he? But how is Carol doing on the diet plan? Right, we've just finished our curry. Mum's in the lounge with the after eggs. And we're going to see if she's going to cheat and give Gizzy any. Not cheating there, Mum, are you? Right, Amelia. Oh, no, I'm not cheating. Well done. But not everyone's diet is going to plan. And then... Look what she's done. Little stinker. 
I can't believe it. Dog. But it's not all Hattie's fault. Mum, you didn't put the mat on the... I know. What a stupid mummy I am. For the plan to work, Louise has to actually turn the mat on. Look at that tummy. The mighty beast. A week later, hungry Hattie strikes again. Hattie's managed to open the fridge now. A new thing. Never had this one before. She's obviously really hungry. It's no good wagging your tail at me. You're in trouble. Over in Guildford, Jennifer is keeping up with Jessie's exercise regime. I think it's starting to make a little bit of difference to her as far as not being weighed down with all these calories. Because that's really all I was giving her was extra calories. Good girl! <laughs> And the hydrotherapy is going swimmingly. Good girl. She's off. <laughs> Will her persistence have paid off? All the dogs are working really hard. Well, almost all of them. It's 20 weeks into Victoria's weight loss program, and she wants to see who's been healthy eating and who's been cheating. How is everybody? Hi. How are the dogs? Fine. <laughs> Victoria has set a series of targets for each dog so she can assess whether the owners have been sticking to her regime. First up, it's Gizmo, starting weight 5.1 kilos. Had they stuck to the regime, Gizmo should now be 3.71 kilos. So how's he done? And he's four kilos. He's four kilos? He's four kilos, exactly. That's... would you say... Would you say that that's pretty good? I'd say that's excellent progress, yeah. Very good. Really good. 20 weeks ago, Jess weighed 19.9 kilos. If they'd stuck to the plan, Jess should have reached 14.49. But has Jennifer been towing the line? What's the verdict, Mark? Oh, Victoria, 15.7. 15.7. What would you say about I'd that, I'd say Mark? that's not bad progress at all. Good girl. Well done, Jess. Brilliant. Finally, it's the turn of Hattie the Beagle, whose monster appetite had given her a monster weight of 27.1 kilos. If Louise and the girls had followed Victoria's orders, she should come in at around 19.73 kilos. Have they stuck to the diet and exercise plan? Let's put her on the scales sure. and see what she weighs. Come on, Hattie. Up you get. Unfortunately, Victoria, we've got a very disappointing 27.4 kilos. Which is heavier than when I weighed her 20 weeks ago. What are you doing? I don't know how she's doing that. She's not going to get fat on absolutely nothing. So have you girls, have you girls nope, been feeding nothing. her? No. Nope. 100% you have never been feeding her? No. Nope. I don't get it. Do you ever give her tidbits other than the training? Presumably she's been going out for lots of exercise. She's been going out. She goes out for a walk once a day, which is about an hour, 40 minutes to an hour. It's not a medical problem. In 20 weeks, medical problems don't really just start up like that. Um, but we will have medical problems very soon, sadly. Our life expectancy is actually shorter than when we, ch when we chatted 20 weeks ago. So something's going wrong somewhere. Victoria suspects the family haven't been as vigilant as they should have been. It's time for some radical intervention. So there's something I'm going to do. I'm going to take her away for a month. It's a short, sharp shock for Louise and the girls. But right now, it looks like Hattie's only chance to beat the bulge. Come on, Hattie. <laughs> She's gone. A dog doesn't get fat by itself. I know she's been fed. And in order for this dog to have any quality of life in her later years, I've had to take drastic action, otherwise this dog will die. Hattie's off to Lucy's farm. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hattie. Here she is. Here are your saviours. Craig and Marjorie own the farm. Nestled on 57 acres in sunny Worcestershire, Lucy's Farm is the premier resort destination for man's best friend, and Hattie's loving it. She'll have a lovely time, but I hate the thought of her, her missing us. It's kind of hard. I'm going to miss her. Great big lump. 
and as per Victoria's regime, the recipe for success is plenty of exercise and a healthy diet away from all temptation. Um, what Hattie will get while she's here is freshly made food with ingredients as far as possible raised on the farm. Um, and then we just add additional ingredients that you everybody has in their cupboard. Kidney beans, lentils, chickpeas, some cereal, and bingo. Good girl. There you go. It's like cold stew. It's lovely. After a hard day, Hattie relaxes to music piped into her room. With Hattie banished, Louise and Jennifer are determined not to fail their dogs. Carol is employing all the old tricks to slim Gizmo down for the final weigh-in, just five weeks away. That's about it. That's all he's allowed, bless him. Isn't it, little man? Eh? That's all you're allowed, isn't it? And we put it in there, and it looks like a big meal. Look at that, eh? She gives her champ a daily pep talk. This is a proper controlled, healthy, living, new gizmo, full of energy diet. Hey, yes, new way of life. And then it's back on the treadmill, pounding those paws. Over in Guildford, Jennifer is keeping up the exercise. It's a good girl. You are a good girl. Oh, you are. But she's slipping back into bad habits as far as the treats are concerned. Jess is so gentle. I caught her tipping at my barbecue on Sunday with um, things that Victoria would probably fall over and die at seeing. No, she wouldn't. Um, Piece of chicken? There, there was, it was a barbecued, coated, sticky toffee chicken no, thing. it wasn't. There probably was. It, it was, was probably... Not. It was a tiny little piece. 0.5% of chicken and the rest sauce. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was a little Plus tiny that. piece. The situation isn't helped by Louise, who sends Hattie's now redundant liver treats over to her fellow Weight Watcher. Jess, yes. this is for you. With love from Hattie, Fat Dogs Unite, the other weight loss challenger. Lots of kisses from Hattie to you. Isn't that lovely? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no, you're not having all them yet. Oh, blimey. Cheers, Hattie. Oh, is that nice? Just like being in a ladies' diet club. We all club together. Let's hope Jennifer's relapse doesn't affect Jess's final weigh in. Now, only days away. Victoria's out to prove the traditional methods are the best, and after five weeks, it's time for Hattie to go home. Did a stint at boot camp give Hattie's extra weight, the boot? Victoria's going to find out. Louise, Emily and Phoebe are reunited with their pet after her exile at Lucy's farm. She's missed you. He's looking good. Yeah. Has all the hard work paid off? Can you tell us what it is, Mark? Well, Victoria, Hattie the not-so-fatty <laughs> is 23.2 kilograms. Yes! Very good! It's an incredible result. Hattie has shed more weight in five weeks than Louise managed to get off her in five months. Does that prove to you that with the right kind of diet, the right kind of exercise, your dog can lose weight? Yeah. She's now a honed hound. You know, I think she looks great, so I just can keep it up. We're yeah. very proud of her. All three of our dogs have successfully lost weight, but that's only half the battle. Keeping it off is the tricky part. How do our fat-fighting contenders fare five months down the line? Will they be even skinnier, or have they been overdoing the dinner? I want to see now just how much each dog has lost. A year ago, Victoria met three porky pooches and vowed to turn them into honed hounds. She put them through their paces and five months ago, the final weigh-in was a triumph with the dogs losing a combined total of 10 kilos. That's the equivalent of 10 bags of sugar. Well done, Jess. Brilliant. But have the Weight Watchers kept up the hard work or have they let things slide? I think Victoria will say she's pleased with our progress but we could do better. I really don't want to face Victoria. 
I think she may shout at me. I think Victoria would be well chuffed with him. The moment of truth. Vet Marks poised with the dreaded scales. Gizmo was the curry king whose love of chocolate saw his weight balloon to 5.1 kilos. Quality straight for a quality dog. One year on, has he reached his target weight of 3.71 kilos? Gizmo weighs 3.4 kilograms. Carol kept up the regime, and Gizmo is at his recommended breed weight and is the shining example of the perfect chihuahua. Brilliant. Next up, Jess. This dumpy dachshund's target weight was 14.49 kilos, but she was led astray by her doting owner and once tipped the scales at 19.9 kilos. Oh, look, there it is. Mum! 12 months down the line, how's she done? Jess weighs 15.2 kilograms. OK, well, at least that's... <laughs> yeah, don't, don't hide from me. But there can be no hiding from the fact that jelly-bellied Jess has lost next to nothing. What's been going on? She's built a lot of muscle, Victoria, because mm. she's been running around an awful lot. See this? I'm not buying that muscle. Jennifer's excuses won't wash, but Victoria has a plan up her sleeve. First, though, it's time to weigh Hattie, who's consistently been the worst performer. This large lady was a master food thief. Her weight had rocketed to an astonishing 27.1 kilos. Her target is 19.73 kilos. Mum, she ate my dinner! A year on, has she met it? Well, Victoria, today Hattie weighs 26.7 kilograms. So she's more than double what she should be weighing. Oops, it's bad news. Hapless Hattie is still an out and out fatty. Why has she actually put on weight? I think it's the exercise because it's just hard. You think, oh, I'll get up at quarter past six, and then quarter past six comes and it's like, oh, I can't get up. You see, I'm sorry, and I'm going to be hard here. You have a fat dog that's going to die in a couple of years' time because half quarter past six comes. You have to get up at quarter past six. I don't care. After a stern dressing down from Victoria, Louise is left to reflect on where she went wrong. No, she's not being unfair. I mean, it's obvious that she's put on the weight, and, and that is down to us. It's not her, it's not the dog's fault. But I still really don't know how I'm going to remedy it. Way in over, Gizmo's owners are feeling jubilant. Really pleased for Gizmo, he's great. He's such a fit little dog. And we've probably put three or four years on his life. Gizzy's looking really good. Everyone says he's lost those away. Mum's done well. So Gizmo's a champion weight watcher. Now Victoria's determined to persuade Jennifer that the last five kilos Jess is carrying have to go. The infuriating thing about Jennifer is she thinks she's done OK. But in the four months since I last saw her, Jess has only lost a tiny bit of weight. And it's no good to have your dog 50% over the weight that they should be. So I've got a little surprise in for Jennifer to show her that this is a much more weightier issue than she believes. Victoria's getting Jennifer to walk in Jess's shoes. She's loading her up with the five kilos that Jess still needs to lose. That's what Jess is carrying. That's what Jess is carrying. Mm. Wow, I don't know how she moved around with that on. That's awful. It's actually quite shocking, isn't it, it is. when you feel it that way? It is, weight? it is. Yes, definitely. It's dreadful. Let's get walking, OK? Carrying around the additional weight puts extra strain on the heart, lungs, back and joints. I wouldn't be able to go very long like this. And they can't tell you, can they? No, they can't tell you. No, Until couldn't. they drop dead, and That's then you right. realise. Now that Jennifer's felt firsthand what it's like to carry around those excess five kilos, she's determined to get Jess down to a healthy weight. This means much more exercise. A ball thrower will take the humble walkies to the next level. What it does, it doubles the distance Jess has got to run to get the ball. OK, so right. now there you go. Super. Chuck OK, it. Jess. Yes, 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 yes. Rule number one, teach your dog to retrieve the ball and bring it back to you, otherwise you're going to have to run after and get the ball back yourself. 
With Victoria confident that Jennifer's back on track, attention turns to the problem of Hefty Hattie. Victoria needs to shock Louise and the girls into action. There was, a, there was an issue um, regarding animal cruelty, um, where two brothers were in charge of a Labrador and let it get so overweight that the dog actually had to be taken away from them. The brothers went through a whole court case, they were fined, and the dog was given back to them under certain criteria, that they had to keep the weight loss going. I don't want it to get like that, but believe me, that's the way the law is going. Right. I don't want this to happen to you. Do you feel like you could try again? Definitely. I mean, we haven't given up on her. It's just, um, I don't know, it's just gone a bit haywire. And life just gets ahead of you, and then you forget what's really important to you and to your dog, really. Lecture over. But if they're going to succeed, they've got to stay motivated. Victoria knows that if exercise is fun, the family are more likely to stick to it. The really important thing is that Hattie needs aerobic exercise every day, and here's a really fun way to do it. Are you ready, girls? Yeah. yeah. Let's go! Of course, safe doggy scootering means strictly no speeding. It's really important that Hattie gets her heart rate up every day to burn calories, and scootering is a really, really good way to do it. Good one! And it's something the whole family can do and the whole family can enjoy. I hope all the owners have come away with a bit of a boost and a few more ideas to continue with their dog's weight loss plan because the dogs deserve it and it's going to put years back on their dog's lives. Yeah.